So, hello everyone, and welcome to Worlds We Were From, Communities We Form. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ritu, and I'm a high school student by day, stand-up comedian by after 3 p.m. <laughs> and this is the fourth event that I'm hosting in my open mic night series called At the Intersection. So my goal with this series is that um, we're able to bring together people who come from different perspectives and experiences, that's all of us, and then be able to connect over these personal stories in the hopes that we can become better listeners and community members. So thank you all so much for braving through the cold and the wind to get here. Um, I'm really excited for the wonderful event that we have lined up for you. We have a variety of speakers with diverse experiences, and I hope that they'll inspire some of you in the audience to come and share your stories at the end in the true impromptu open mic night spirit. And so um, we're gonna be starting with these speakers after we go to the audience. At the end, we'll also be cutting a cake for um, someone in the audience's birthday today, <laughs> and we'll have a casual mixer after that as well. And so I know it's always hard to go first because everyone's still gauging the, the vibe of the room. People are settling in, you know, how are people feeling? So I like to go first to take that burden off of the other speakers. And also for those of you in the audience who are shy, if a 17 year old can do it, you can do it. <laughs> are you guys ready? Yeah, okay. So thank you. <laughs> Clearly, I'm Indian when you look at me, but what you don't know unless you've spent some time uh, getting to know me is that a part of me is also Mexican and Colombian. More about that later. So I've only been to India four times in my life. The first time I was just about two years old, like about her age right there, and this was for a ceremony called Manda. This is a Hindu ceremony where they shave off the baby's first hair. And the idea is that you're getting rid of the negative, the negativity from the previous life and the baby, is, the hair is gonna grow back stronger. And so, they, as you can imagine, this is great in theory. Um, in practice, it's not fun for the kid. <laughs> so luckily, I'm able to look back and cherish these memories because my mundan was recorded by my dad. <laughs> and this is before the iPhone. So he had a camera and he was able to get in like, all these angles. So my mom's holding me like this. He goes from the below angle. So you can see the absolute agony on my face as this man is just like scraping my, my head with a knife. Um, now you can imagine, my parents had to put a lot of faith into this neighborhood funded this uh, religious um, priest who was there and shaving my head. But he was pretty good, and if Yelp had a category for baby head shaver, he would be a solid five stars. <laughs> and so in this video, I'm screaming, I have no idea what's going on, and my daddy, my dad's mom, she's playing the harmonica, she's trying to distract me. My dada, my dad's dad, he is playing Hindi music, and just trying to, you know, change the vibe up. And meanwhile, I'm just screaming, I'm holding on to dear life to this gigantic Hershey's bar that my parents gave me. <laughs> and, you know, after this whole ordeal is over, I am just, like, I'm looking, they, my parents give me a mirror. I'm looking in the mirror and seeing my shiny bald head. And my parents decide to play a little joke on me. They go, hey, we too, where's your nose? I'm like, nose. And they go, hey Ritu, where's your hair? And I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm so confused. And I'm just picking up these fallen strands, and I'm just trying to like pat them on my head and give myself a comb over, it's not working. But anyways, that was back in 2007. You might be wondering, what makes me Indian today? I have two answers to that. Chai and bargaining. First, chai. Now, Chai is at the essence of the Indian spirit. In fact, we're so passionate about it that one of the best ways to get a room full of Indians to argue with each other is to ask, is it pronounced chai or cha? 
If you don't understand, that's because there's different ways to say it in different dialects, and people will get very passionate. And what, what happens with chai is when I would go to India and I visit my Aji Ajoba, which is uh, my mom's parents, uh, we would every morning share life stories over a nice cup of chai. And in between these tales, they're the ones who taught me how to dip my first biscuit. So for those of you who don't know, there's a lot of technique involved in drinking tea and dipping biscuits. And it depends heavily on the biscuit. First, if you're using a parley G, one dip max. Any more and it's just going to sink into the bottom, you lost forever. If you're using a marigold, you can swim it around all day and it's still gonna be hard as a brick. <laughs> we actually have chai and several of these biscuits here, so please do enjoy it. Just watch out with the parley tea. <laughs> Second, bargaining. Now, I know a lot of cultures around the world pride themselves on their negotiating know-how, but nothing beats an Indian who is out for a good deal, okay? Have you ever seen Indians trying to negotiate with a vendor? It's terrifying. They got this like Jedi mind trick where they can convince you to sell something happily for half the price you were initially asking for. Now, in America, we have fixed prices on pretty much everything. So unfortunately, I cannot bring out this bargaining beast inside me. However, the next best thing is buying in bulk. And that's why I love Costco. By the way, if you go to a Bay Area Costco on a Friday night, I guarantee you that 90% of the people there are Indian. That's fact. <laughs> so that's my Indian part. Now, more about my Mexican and Colombian part. This comes from experiences that I've had um, living with au pairs who come from these countries. So my family, um, we, we get au pairs through a program called Cultural Care. And I feel like that name really encapsulates everything that it's about. So I'll give you an example. Um, one tradition that we picked up is from, we had an au pair from Mexico, and her name was Caro. And she showed us something called La Mordida. Does anyone here know what? Oh, someone's speaking, okay. So for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna explain what it is, and then you're gonna go back home and integrate it into your lives, okay? So La Mordida is, when it's someone's birthday, you have the cake there, you take the birthday person's hands behind their back, and then you shove their head into the cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you pull them out. Meanwhile, their nose is like lodged with cream. They're struggling to breathe. And then you cut the cake. <laughs> it's great, right? <laughs> Except when we do it in my family, we use a bowl of whipped cream to, to shove the person's face into. Because, let's face it, I'm too Indian to waste that extra part of the cake. <laughs> so I was telling this to Ingrid. Um, she's our current au pair. She's from Colombia, and she's actually in the crowd right here. Yeah, hi, Ingrid. <laughs> so she was telling me that in Colombia, they do that too, sometimes. But what's more common is they'll take a birthday person, they'll take an egg. Guess what happens next? <laughs> Crack. And sometimes, They'll throw flour on them too. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> so my reaction was, okay, maybe that works in Colombia, but in California, considering egg prices right now, I don't know. I don't know. Costco. And the Costco, Costco eggs. They got them. They got them today. Oh, great. Gotta get that deal after this then. So the great thing about cultural care is that it works both ways too. The au pair gets to learn a lot about Indian culture. So um, we once had an au pair, her name was Laura, she's also from Colombia. And before she came here, her brother was telling her, oh, you're gonna go live with an Indian family, you have to get used to how they're gonna speak with the accents. So she's like, okay, how do I do that? And he tells her, go watch The Simpsons, Listen to how Apu speaks. You understand that? You're good. So she goes, turns on The Simpsons, and she's freaking out because she cannot under... You know, you guys know Apu, right? He's the, the Indian store owner in The Simpsons who speaks like this. <laughs> Fun fact, he's actually played by a white man who has since uh, resigned that role and apologized for the perpetuating those stereotypes. 
But anyways, when Laura came here, she was very scared, but she soon realized that that's not the case. That's not how we speak. And we actually ended up um, introducing her to various aspects of the Indian culture. We uh, took her to Ganpati festival celebrations and Diwali parties. So we had a lot of fun with her. And so, you know, as I'm reflecting on these different experiences that I've had with my curiosity for different cultures, I feel like the key to understanding, um, when, you know, a lot of times we want others to understand ourselves. And I think that the key to that is first, when we understand others. Um, and so, you know, when I'm thinking, ultimately our identities are made up of things that we inherit and things that we also choose. So when I think about what I want to pass on to the next generation, you know, maybe the mandan isn't going to make it, but definitely the chai, la mordida, and singing happy birthday in English and Spanish. And so I look forward to hearing other stories that other speakers tonight are going to share about their personal journeys with culture. Thank you.